Shalom Rastafari, in a Rasya Dinos Tafari name. This is Wendem Yadin of the LOJ Society of His Imperial Majesty. And we want to touch on this particular subject matter um, previously. And we did, if you, I think it, was, it might still be up there in our video um, on the YouTubes, um, or maybe it's on one of the other uh, platforms out there, but it was about China and, and, and Ethiopia and China. If you look at the 2012 video, right, the 2012 Zion video that I think a couple of years ago we posted, it still should be in this archive right here. Um, you'll see that there's some historic footage of Kadamawi Haile Shalase, I and I, Godfather, the King of Kings, Abba, going to China back in the I think this was the 60s, sometime the 60s or early 70s, right? The 60s, early 70s. Now, this was all prior to, mm hmm. This was prior to the Nixon, the whole Nixon thing. Remember the Nixon thing? This was all prior to the Nixon when uh, Nixon and um, Nixon. President Nixon, right? And this is interesting. Maybe we should bring up the picture of Nixon. Could we look at some historical pictures of China, seeing what we have on this drive right here, right? And the famous meeting that we show you, we'll, we'll zoom in so you can get a close-up zoom, but we want to mention the video as well, right? And then there's also Mellis. Mellis seems to have gotten the idea. It's interesting how the Ethiopians are beginning to see some of the plans that His Majesty had in mind. And without giving His Majesty credit for it, they are basically, you know, going out there or they're making these agreements or deals on a certain level. So they're following through to a certain degree with His Majesty's plan, but they're trying to get credit, right, credit for it, right? So um, Mellis, uh, here's Mellis um, with a China bank official, right? Now, some say that well, the Chinese are trying to buy out, you know, they're trying to control Africa, so forth and so on. And and if y'all don't know how to rule, if we don't know how to rule, well, there's a strong possibility that they, that they will. But if we now go to the very roots of it, and this is a, a historic map of the Silk Road, right, just for you to see the historic map of the Silk Road. And so here we have China. Now, remember, we're in this whole global kind of so-called system, but the global system is having some severe problems, right? Um, we see China, right, um, moving more to the Asia and Africa region, right? Um, we also see China's form of communism differing um, greatly with so-called Russian um, socialism or the, the United Socialist Soviet Republics. Now, Ethiopia after the Illuminati attempt at the creeping coup, and that's a whole very interesting thing right there. A lot of what we've received and we hear from other so-called Ethiopians out here in the diaspora, so on and so on, is skewed information. We're getting a false narrative. You know, since this is why many of us have done and are doing our own study and research to, to really fact check what's what so we can get a clear picture, a clear idea. You understand? Ethiopia in 1970s made the wrong move, you understand, and that wrong move was to the Soviet socialist bloc. In fact, they should have went to the, the Chinese, you know, China, or Shina, or China, actually, because then that would have been following through with the plans of His Majesty, but most likely they could not because the, the Chinese did not really respect what they did, and still don't respect what they did, but they have a they have a, a, a different view. Now we know that there's a a, a so-called Chinese Illuminati. Now what do we mean Illuminati or secret society? In other words, every group of people, especially people who are, have like thousands of years and, and and certain history and culture, have their own ideas of this time of change. So we're going into a time of change. Twenty. Um, 12, 2013, that 83 or so years, right, um, it marks this time of change. And, and you see all the signs. There's, there's, there's many signs of this and from different, from different um, whether religions or theologies or different um, 
um, um, I'm, I'm not going to call it speculation. I don't want to run it down. You understand? Because it's easy to say, well, these Aztecs, so and so and some say it was only the Bible, but John, the, the true and living God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is not so unkind or unmerciful to forget about other peoples because they did not accept European uh, missionary activity or do, do not accept it in that sense. In fact, China is one of the biggest producers of the Bible right now. In other words, uh, even though they, people say, well, they're against religion, they're against Falun Gong or whatever like that, so forth and so on, you see China is one of the biggest um, printers of the Bible in the world. You understand? And China is going through a series of changes, and it's very I enigmatic. You understand? Very enigmatic, exactly what these changes mean. And we've also checked out, like, say, Alex Jones and some of these other programs out there that talk about how the Chinese are. I remember it was in his program, someone else's program, how they're building this highway. Maybe it was Bill Deagle, you understand? Talking about how the Chinese are building this highway and everything um, through the Hindus Kush Mountains down to the Red Sea and also in Central Africa. You understand how they are doing a lot of building and construction in Central Africa. Some say this is um, like a forward thinking, right, a forward thinking to what, what's going to occur um, to the uh, Teutonic plates and with the whole um, um, uh, magnetic um, pole shift and everything else like that, that they, they already recognize that many of the people who live on the coast many of the coast cities will be flooded out, right? And this is not to even talk about the harp weapons, which kind of modify, you know, and decrease or increase storms. You know, talking about planetary, you know, control being, being on that, what level the earth is right now, right? So now if you notice that, that there's a Silk Road, an ancient Silk Road. Remember we mentioned about the Edomite connection and Esau and Jacob, and that when we look at the pure... Edomites, in that sense, the pure scriptural Edomites, this is the so-called black Asians, right? And the black Asians, their latter-day descendants, you understand, with somewhat mixed blood, like many people's bloods have been mixed, but still that root, when they found the ancient Chinese um, uh, warriors, you know, we all recognize how they were black and the features and everything else. We can look at African features and see these same sort of Asian or so-called Chinese features, but actually they're originally African. So this is just to give us some of the background on this, not from a Eurocentric misinterpretation, which basically is on the deception of Satan, saying that the white people are superior, and this will lead to the Darwinism and this whole um, um, uh, favored um, races, you understand? Um, favored races and, 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 and this whole idea of the struggle for life and the preservation of this favored race, and they're speaking about fear races or so-called European. You know, that's a deception right there of Satan on the devil. You understand that white supremacy thing. You understand that? And that should be distinguished from white people wanting to be white and live in their European lands. That's, that's all right. You understand those little lands that have been allotted to them. But then when we see things like apartheid, South Africa, and other, other cases, of stealing other people's lands and other things like that. This is categorically wrong. And we're not going to get into some of the, the, the local geopolitical issues because we're dealing prophetically right here. And the main message right here is to ask and answer the question, um, is China or was, was Haile Selassie's secret partner in a sense China? And many of the moves that China has made since this particular historic uh, visit that we have right here. Let's see if we can bring this over right here so you can see what we're speaking about right here, right? So here we have um, the Ethiopian uh, delegation, right, meeting with the Ethiopian, or the Ethiopian delegation meeting with the China, the representatives of China, and this, and this takes place in China. Now, the exact year on it, please forgive me, you understand the, the exact year of, of this meeting. But one thing we recall, that the links that were being made and formed, remember what Elijah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are Asiatic, the Asiatic black man? Because if you look at Africa, you understand the, the, the whole relationship right there, if you know the, who's who in the Bible, you understand, you see this whole connection. That's why when you look in older Islamic pictures, 
all the Islamic pictures that, that are out with the whitewash of the face whited out of, of their prophet, you find that the people look Chinese. Have you noticed that? If you look at the Mohammedan pictures, they all look Chinese. And you have to ask yourself, or Asian, let's say Asian, right? And you say, well, what's up with them looking Asian? Right? Or they used to say Oriental. And the Ethiopian church is not really the just Eastern Orthodox. It's really the Oriental churches, those five churches. Now, you don't notice on the Chinese flag, there are five stars. And if you know what's in the heavens, that the virgin carries that branch, that netta, right, that also has five stars, right? And now putting it all together, the, the prophecy is very interesting. Right, so we have this connection here with Africa. We have this connection with the Middle East, right? And we also have the Arabic or the Mohammedan paintings, right? The oldest of their paintings, notice this, the oldest of these Mohammedan paintings, and we don't have it right here to show you, but you can go look them up, Islamic art and so forth and so on, and you'll see it for yourself. But then you have to ask yourself, for these people that we see today in the so-called Middle Eastern regions, do not look anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So something must have happened. Population must have come in. Population must have been pushed out. And there must have been some movement or migration. Even the ancient Japanese culture and civilization, they trace their origins in their oldest documents to this region of the world, to the Middle Eastern region of the world. You know what I'm saying? So we have not been given full and a complete history. Even though it's out there, the oldest, and we haven't been given it from this um, Anglo-European, Anglo-American paradigm. The oldest, and in the Anglo-American paradigm, we as black people, you understand, are not even people. The oldest, and we're three-fourths or three-fifths of a human being. You know, that's garbage. You understand, that's, that's, that's garbage, plain and simple. But not all people look at it like that. This is, this is the beautiful thing. So when His Imperial Majesty made those overtures to the East, and to China, we have to recall that America was in this Cold Bloc, Cold War, Eastern Bloc on communism, the red, you red, you red, you red, you know, you know, and anything dealing with anything that was not what they're dealing with was the enemy, that whole Cold War. Now, Ethiopia was, in a sense, sacrificed, right, on the altar of a New World Order for the Cold War. That's, that's one of the little hidden secret truths right there. You know, but some have discovered it, others are discovering for themselves, or some, when they see it, it seems too amazing. It, it's, cause Ethiopia seems like one small country, so to speak. Now let's zoom in right here. So here we have um, Mao, Te, uh, Mao Te Sung, you understand, um, with Kadamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I. Right, and I mean, you can see the warmness of brotherhood. You know, saying you know the Asiatic black man. You know, you could, you can see this link right there. Now, <laughs> what's so interesting is that it is Mao Te Tung, right, who actually put into effect these radical changes in China. That we see China still being a so-called communist, but they even proudly say that our communism is not like a Roche. It's not like it's not like the Russians. It's not their communism. It's a whole different kind of communism, and, we, and we, we're seeing this more and more. You know, saying we see the rapid rise of China. You know, saying that China is made to be the international boogeyman. You know, but now if we as Ethiopians at home and abroad, and the diaspora especially, because we really, you know, we have an important um, our voice, our word. We are the word of God. We are the word of the King of Kings and His Christ in the earth. You understand? We are those pillars. You understand? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This is what the, the, the creeping satanic coup against his imperial majesty was all about. And it's not that Men, Mengistu Haile Mariam is really not the boogeyman that we think he is. Of course, a lot of people say, oh, he killed him, he killed him. He him. But then he says he didn't kill him. And then the bones are not even Haile Selassie's bones. You understand? And all that's been proven. But they, you know, the media, we have to understand their media. This is why we have to be about our media. And each of you brothers and sisters that know that the Holy Spirit has planted in your heart and your mind something to say or something to do, you are part of this, this, this new media. You understand the ID Zemin media, you understand, of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So we have to recognize who are our potential allies. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, recognizing what situation we are in today. Well, let's recognize that. But this is a beautiful picture right here, right? It's interesting because they show men holding hands. There's this whole other agenda out there. There's this false uh, agenda out there that want to say, oh, what's wrong with them? How come they're holding hands? Because you have to remember that there is a ritual, right, amongst the Illuminati, among the, the Satanists, among some of these uh, New World Order, Secret Society, European um, globalists, Gentile globalist people. There's this idea, you understand, I mean, a ritual, actually, of killing the king. You understand the monarchy? Look up monarchy and killing of the king as a ritual. There's a ritual. You understand? Because who is the king? The king is the Abba. Every system, whether you want to call it democracy or republic or blah, blah, rea, rea, you understand? Decisions always come down to one man. Not one man and one man only. That's the other dictatorship, so forth and so on. But the, it, it, see, the king is, is, is a principle of God. You know what I'm saying? As, as God is the father over the family, as Adam, you know what I'm saying? As Adam was also that, um, the Muslims call it the Khalifa or the Khalifa. He was the leader. He was the one, you remember when the Almighty called all the angels and says, bow to Adam, right? He is the ruler of this planet Earth. He is Earth's rightful ruler. You know what I'm saying? That the angels bowed except for the rebellious angels, the rebellious angels did not bow to Adam. So they did not bow to monarchy, right, which is God's system. That's why when his majesty was asked questions about monarchy and republic and this and that, he said, don't try to fool people with your word game, your shell game. You know what I'm saying? And what's so interesting is that now many of us are beginning to recognize exactly what his majesty has said. How many years later? You know what I'm saying? How many years has it been later? Like, well, almost 40 years later? 40 years later, we're just getting wise to what his majesty was already wise to. So we did not, or our ancestors did not listen to Abba. They did not listen to Father. But this ritual, right, this ritual of killing the king is so, you know, it's like we were doing our studies and we came across it in principle. But we didn't know that it had a name. We didn't know that it was a formalized sort of ritual. It's a real thing that they do. You understand? And then it's like kind of the height. You know, when, when Elijah, the Honorable Elijah Mohammed, right, when he said that um, to uh, Farrakhan, uh, reportedly, right, when he said to Farrakhan that you don't know the depths of Satan, you know, you know, you don't know the depths of, you know, there are deep things, you know, there are demonic hierarchies that were raised up against Adam, as it was in the beginning. Remember what happened in the garden? A serpent crept into the garden, right? A serpent was in the garden, and it deceived who? It deceived Eve, right? It deceived, Eve was deceived, but man, the man did it willingly. And now look at the whole church and state paradigm of Ethiopia, especially now with this double hit. In fact, we was looking at the Wilder page connected with the official Ethiopian government page, and they were speaking about um, Mela Zanawi, um, the former PM prime minister who died or was reported dead on uh, August 21st, 2012, and then previous to that on August uh, 17th, um, um, the Abuna uh, Aulos, the Archbishop of the Ethiopian um, Orthodox Church, was also... Um, pronounced dead. You understand? And this is both happens in, 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 in less than, what, four or four so days. You understand? And everyone's wondering whether this is a conspiracy. You understand? Um, whether this just happened, whether this is an act of God, or whether it's an act of man. You understand? But when we look at it, and we recognize as one of our and I brethren in a recent reasoning, uh, Brother Manley was reasoning about it, and, and he noticed that in the sabbatical studies and our Rastafari Sabbath studies and Torah portion readings and feedings, that basically spoke about how Yahweh, how the true and living God in Christ for his people in that time and in this time and in every time they call upon him, you understand, and they are truly in faith and spirit and in truth of him, that he will get rid of the enemies little by little. So if we view these as our enemies, speaking of, uh, you know, some with what's going on in Ethiopia being anti-monarchical, 
You know what I'm saying? We can see that S big S. Little by little, this is being removed. But what we're speaking on right here, that's, that's another uh, prayer that I, 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 I uh, as they say, digress. Is that how they say it? You know, we're going on another point, the Illuminati ritual of killing the king, which is very, very important. Because then when you kill the king, it's to kill the father, it's to kill God. You know what I'm saying? It's another way of crucifying Christ. You know what I'm saying? Killing the father, killing the number one. You see, because this universe is not just, see, some think that it, it works digitally, too. So that idea of killing the king also creates chaos, as we see what occurred in Ethiopia, you understand, for, what, 27 or so years, is the chaos factor. And what do they say? They say, order of chaos, right? Order out of chaos, right? But what we're speaking of right here is the forward thinking of his majesty that right now many of us are beginning to see how far his majesty saw into the future and how 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 a gravely affected or disaffected we have become because of the former generation's disobedience. And there's a choice before us right now. First of all to 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 uh, get informed. We have to get the right information. We have to study these things. We have to don't don't check my word alone on this. Check it out for yourself. His Majesty goes to China. You know, and at this very interesting time in global world affairs, right? And this is just prior to the godless and the creeping coup against our father, against Kedamawi Haile Shalase. Because see what happened? There were traitors within. In fact, well, let's not, we're not going to name names right now. Some of them have already passed away, you understand. But there are others who still carry on in their folly philosophies, you understand, against the King of Kings and his Christ, you understand. So we have to really recognize what his majesty, the right course. Now, Nixon, okay, let's get to Nixon for a moment. Nixon, right, let's see if we can get Nixon right here. Let's bring up Nixon. Right, Nixon had a policy in America which was anti-red. You understand? He it was anti, um, you know, red China. You understand? And red and 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 Soviet Union at that particular time. Even Ethiopia was, you know, not leaning towards communism in the sense of socialism because the Nazi understood what had gone on in the killing of the king. You understand? When they killed uh, the Russian king and, and the chaos that that was caused right you remember the chaos that was caused at that time if you study russian history and stalinism so forth and so on and what's interesting is that we're going through a phase of um uh what they call it uh socialism you know what i'm saying socialism even over here so we have this right here we have his majesty right his majesty and um um nixon Right, we have His Majesty. We're gonna put it right here. Yeah, His Majesty and Nixon, right here. Right. Now it's it's very interesting that every um, president of America that His Majesty spoke with, and we believe that everyone that actually began to hear and listen to His wisdom and tried to set policies in motion, the overstand towards that was taken out. Or whether from Kennedy, you understand, Eisenhower was a, it was a little bit of a different sort, but he recognized the military industrial complex and how this man who, you know, speaking of his majesty, who didn't have any college or big time first world education, told him things and taught him things that he should have known already. And then the last speech that he gives is the beware of this military industrial complex, because this is according to the teaching of his majesty. You see, it's important to have. Um, 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 uh, the wherewithal to defend yourself. He said his majesty spoke about man's destruction began with the arms race. But he wasn't talking about just the modern arms race. He was going all the way back to the fallen demons, the fallen archons who taught man, you know, these different weapons of war and everything else. How do we know? Because the Ethiopic is the Ethiopic Enoch, right? It's Ethiopic Enoch that actually um, speaks those things, and they didn't know these things in the West until very recently. And now with that knowledge proliferating, 
you understand? People are beginning to recognize that. This is also another picture right here, right? Let's go right here, right? This is his majesty, a beautiful picture right here, where his imperial majesty is counseling and advising. Look at this beautiful picture. Is advising um, Nixon. You understand? Now, we know what sort of person Nixon was, but you, you don't understand the power of grace, the grace of God. And you understand, even amongst I and I, as, as true Christ man, brothers and sisters in spirit and in truth, you understand? Because where sin abounds, right, grace did abound much more. You understand? And this is why these darlings, like, like Kennedy, until Kennedy recognized and he refused to, you know, start perpetual war in Asia. Because who, who advised him against that? It was his majesty. Even though Kennedy at first was like um, um, playing a duplicitous game, he eventually, you know, recognized and he said no to a perpetual war in Asia. You understand? And they killed him. You understand? And they killed him. All right? And then we have Nixon, right? Then we have Nixon coming along later on, right? And then Nixon, they impeach him about some so-called Watergate file. Oh, come on now. Some Watergate file, some so-called, he has agents going into place. I mean, look, oh, come on. That's the real reason? That's not the re that's a shell game right there. You understand? Know that's, a, that's a shell game because people understood or knew what the real reason, what was the real deal he was in behind all of that. They would agree with the wisdom of his majesty. You understand? Whether they know it's his wisdom or not, they will agree with the wisdom of his majesty. So this is very interesting, this picture here. So we're showing you China. Now, now he was not inclined to China because the whole, I think, was the Republican philosophy that he was running on was like against the Reds and the Reds and we got to protect Europe and Germany because that's what they're about. That's their homeland. This is why we're speaking about this, about Ethiopia, because it's our homeland, Africa. It's our homeland. We got to know about these things. All right? So China was and still is if we approach China correctly and if the Ethiopian um, so-called politicians or leaders recognize this truth, and they don't have to be Rastafari to recognize it. You know what I'm Recognize what's good for Ethiopia in the big picture. You know what I'm saying? With the big picture. Let's recognize that with the big picture. So this is also another picture right here where um, His Majesty is speaking with um, on the throne. Mm-hmm on the throne, right, and this is here, so this is in Ethiopia, and this is here over in um, D.C., right, D.C., right, um, and this is one other picture which is interesting, too, and remember it was, it was Nixon, remember what Nixon said, Nixon said uh, about the Bohemian Grove, remember what he said, he said that all these faggoty people, and the most faggoty people he ever seen up in Bohemian Grove, they all kind of weird stuff. You remember, and a lot of folks have put it in their videos, and it's out there. The overs. Now, think about that. That means he wasn't really, Nixon wasn't really down with that. Yeah, he, he's a president, and he has his own philosophies, and they can, you know, agree on some issues or whatever like that. But you notice that he wasn't down with even that, which is a very telling sign, uh, I would say. Mm-hmm. And then he will be the only president to be uh, successfully impeached, you know, and in a sense almost like run out of office. Well, he resigned, but still we know what happened. He tried the same thing with Kennedy. Uh, not Kennedy, uh, uh, Clinton. Excuse me, Freud, 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 the end slip. You understand? But now notice his majesty's face right here is interesting. Let's get a, let's get a zoom in on his majesty's face, right? Look at his majesty's face right here. It's very, very interesting. You understand? And he's holding that sign of peace, right? No, notice Nixon. Nixon's not doing the same thing. You understand? None of them. Only now some people are trying to do it because of the OTO. Mm -hmm. Because they're jacking symbols and they're jacking stuff. They're trying to jack technology. You understand? Even spiritual technology. They, they, they don't really understand. You understand? So if we put anything out about it, they all of them will hit it up. Bang, 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 bang. You understand? But, you know, they have to go to source. You understand? And then they can get the resource. 
But but his Nazi's face right there is very very you know he's serious. He's a serious. You know people try to take Hala Selassie for joke, he, like a game. It ain't no joke or game. You see what's going on with the global situation, the world situation. You understand when people start starving to death, then they might really recognize and hopefully it doesn't really have to go there. It doesn't really have to get there, at least not in the in the worst paradigm of it. If we will recognize these gems, these jewels, these truths. You know what I'm saying? So, His Majesty in China, right? And China is a secret partner. You know what I'm saying? In that sense. In other words, there are elements within the, um, the Chinese uh, system mm-hmm. that recognize His Majesty and even many more that recognize Christ. They, you have to remember their whole culture, what they have gone through. As a as a as a as a cultural group, you understand they were under certain uh, demonic, and still there is that activity there as it is in every nation on the face of this earth. Mm-hmm. I thought when we talk about Ethiopia and what occurred in the revolution, see that was that was that was when when certain world powers saw this right here, this made them in a sense, as they say, shit bricks. You know what I mean? When they saw this right here, you know, because the potential for Africa, you know what I'm saying? That even when you look at Ethiopia, how come Ethiopia did not go to the Chinese side but instead of went to the Russian side? I mean, think about that for a moment. You know I mean? And how come this, this former PM also would go to the Chinese side? And even on many other ways we have our, you know, operatives, you know, Ethiopian, Rastafari, whether dreadlock or non-dreadlock, you know, saying you have to be in the spirit to really know it, you know, um, who, have, who have already put the pieces, you know, all the elements together and brought forth certain discoveries and everything that just, just fits into this, this big picture, this big picture paradigm. You understand of where we're at right now, because you're gonna hear a lot of folks saying, "Oh, China is taking over Africa, and China is a, is doing this to Africans and so forth and so on, and Ethiopia, so forth and so on." Um, you have to really watch that. You really have to really watch that. And, and first of all, you got to know the truth. You understand? So, in some strange way, this 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 this, this double cross, right? And that's what probably be the next part of this. We'll deal with the double cross, right? Um, right here now, Kissinger, right now it was it was it was Kissinger, right, who is credited um, with um, telling um, uh, Nixon, President Nixon, to uh, go to China. You understand? To you know to go to China, and and, and that was. It's shocking. Even now they talk about and 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 when Nixon did that, now they start to praise him because the whole world order, you know, was the the the, the vision what his Majesty already saw and tried to give I and I first dibs on it. In other words, now is more you know common as like organic food, right? Organic food one time was something that was only the purview of uh, Rastafari and certain other kind of groups. Even a lot of New Age groups wasn't even up on that. The whole green thing. Now they're trying to use the green thing as another um, surreptitious way. You understand to, to rule the world. It's like behind the green mask, in a sense. You've got to watch out for that as well. You understand they want to save the earth, and they're not even saved themselves. You understand? Because what they sought to do has created this chaos in the world. You understand the killing of the king. And in every country, you see this going on. And unfortunately, some members of the imperial family did not understand this. No, they didn't. They didn't understand. There's a document right here that I want to show the eye. Um, we'll get into this hopefully a little bit more, but you can see if you find it out there. It's called the Horn of Africa. It says imperialist battleground. When people say imperialist, i got to ask, uh, who's, in, who's empire? Whose empire are you speaking about? You know what I'm saying? Because they might mean the Gentiles, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and boisterous white supremacy or England or something like that, the British or whatnot, the Europeans, okay, the Romanists, you know what I'm saying? But then also we have to remember that we have an empire and, and we are members of that commonwealth, you know what I'm saying? Even here in the exile in every country, like I say, that every... Every Rastafari in whatever country, they are of the elect. 
because of that name of the elect that you carry. Now you have to grow up to him. You have to have the knowledge of the Son of God. Now, this is this is the cover right here, right? This is part of the cover right here. You can see how they are seeking to divide and conquer, you know, divide and rule. This particular document comes from the revolutionary reprints, right? Some socialist stuff. It was only a dollar fifty, a buck fifty. All right, you know, at that time, right? And this particular book right here is one of the um, pamphlets, the pamphlets available at revolutionary reprints. So, you know, in America now, there's a lot of socialist talk. Whether Obama's a socialist, he's trying to bring in socialism. And this would make sense on a certain level why there are certain in the Ethiopian community who, although they know what they know, are doing what they're doing. Now, this particular book right here, we can't go through all of it right now, and we have some notes here that we had made previously, you understand, some years ago, and then we get to find this again. They speak about the reign of Hala Selassie, you understand, and it's really from this document right here that we learn uh, so very much. I mean, and this is a very telling document, especially to the Rastafari, you understand, speaking about, um, like, Castro, Mengistu Castro, and Soviet, notice, it's Soviet imperialists, right? A, a, a nasty love affair in the Horn of Africa. It's a very nasty love affair. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not in the order of his majesty. You know what I'm saying? That's why some who speak about, um, oh, Castro, or they want to talk about um, what you want to call it, the Castro and, 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 and Libya, you know what I'm Interesting, in this one year, we will get a triple hit, a trifecta. There's a trifecta, right, in this U.S. imperialist strategy. You know, some of that rhetoric right there. The armed struggle, let's show you this right here. The armed struggle in the Horn of Africa, you understand, which is still going on. You understand? And we're still seeing the, the bad fruit, you understand, the weeds, you know. And it speaks about Tigray and, and Oromia. This is what has really divided and conquered Ethiopians. When you see um, Ethiopians, you see right here now available, you know, talking about this stuff right here, you know, some of that stuff. You know, it's still going on, but in a different name. But people have just, like, changed costumes. Different people are stepping up front, so forth and so on. Right? So, yes, one of the secret partners, in other words, we see China moving in some ways along the path of what Mao Zedong, you know, has actually um, outlined, you know what I'm saying, which moves more and more away from the, 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 the Soviet thing, which we now know that behind the Soviet thing is actually this whole kind of like a Illuminati, New World Order kind of thing going on. You know, a lot of these videos have pointed it out. You know what I'm saying? When you see the persecution of the church in, in Russia, you know what I'm saying? And then you recognize that many of the black icons in, Christ, in, in, in Christendom, right, actually are these Russian Orthodox icons. Yeah, even some of them have dreadlocks and stuff like that. It's very interesting. And some of the oldest of the iconography was preserved in Russia, and a lot of that was destroyed, too, after the death, right, or the, or the, or the killing, rather, the murder of the king, and that's what caused the Russian system to implode. Then we will see the same thing really happen in Ethiopia, although that was not the first plan of the Illuminati. The Illuminati's plan and the secret society's plan against his majesty kind of backfired, because while they plotted a plan, while they planned a plan, his majesty planned a plan, and his majesty is the best of planners. You know what I'm saying? So they planned a plan against, just like right now, there's the enemies that plan a plan against his majesty and his people. You understand? I and I at home and abroad, and his majesty, our father, Albert, plans a plan. You understand? And his plan, you understand, is the best of plans because he is the best of planners. So I want you just to understand this, do your research on this, but we, we thought it necessary in this whole global kind of thing with China and everything for us to better understand it because we keep hearing some um, misinformed people, and some of them actually Rasta and Rastafari, Rastafarian people, putting out some contradictory um, 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 doctrine, you understand, or, or, or information that actually goes against, 
you understand, goes against the teaching and the deeds, the work of the King of Kings. And so this is like a point of order. You understand, a point of order. You understand, there is a relationship between, I mean, this is almost like Jacob in a sense. This is like Yaakov and Esau, if you, if you can receive it. You know, that's once again, Ishmael, the Ishmaelites mixed with the Edomites, so forth and so on. That's where we get the black, you understand, the black kind of, uh, the black Asian, so forth and so on. But then, as, and even in, in, when they found the, um, the Chinese warriors and everything, like that, that's, that's very telling. You know, that's very telling. And even within the cultural hip-hop and rap, and even you see them saying nigga, 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 and we think that it means something negative. But, but it, to a degree with some of them, it does mean something negative, but with many of them, it's something endearing. And, and the same way we say it's endearing, we say, well, how can they say that? Because we do not know the half of the story. And we need to know what the other half of the story is so we can get a full picture, you know what I'm saying, and make better choices towards the blessing and not continuing to repeat the curse in ignorance of the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. So, Shalom. To I and I, Rastafari, as well as to, to, to all in the human community that are about truth and right, the King of Kings and His Christ.